Hello and welcome back to the Toronto Website Developer.com. I am Peter Worski, the Toronto Website Developer specializing in Drupal. In this eighth video tutorial of our 10 part video tutorial series on Drupal 7 module development, I want to finish off the flag application administration form and show you how we can actually handle the information that's submitted back to Drupal uh, when the user clicks the submit button. But before we do that, I'm over at torontowebsitedeveloper.com slash store and here you can purchase my video tutorial series. Uh, this one will be up as soon as I complete it. And each video tutorial sale goes to help me continue to develop these video tutorials, keep them free, keep them frequent uh, and available on YouTube. So I greatly appreciate all those that have gone ahead and purchased video tutorial series. Uh, additionally, if you'd like to help out but you can't afford the $20, uh, please just give this video a thumbs up or leave a comment on YouTube, uh, both of which I greatly appreciate because they give me some feedback. And also, YouTube tracks user engagement by uh, the number of likes and, and comments and that kind of thing, uh, and will help promote these video tutorials to other users based upon uh, the number of comments and likes that the video has. Lastly, if you haven't gone ahead and subscribed to my channel, please do so. It's something I do track. And again, it's another indicator to me on whether or not these video tutorials are hitting the mark. So please uh, go ahead and subscribe. That said, why don't we go back over to our site and you'll see here, uh, this is where we left off in the previous video tutorial, where we went ahead and we created this nice table using table select, which provided some checkboxes. And then we also added this select box for approve and deny and created a submit button. And that was all based on our previous code, uh, which we had here uh, in the flag application admin ink file under flag application form. But when we submitted the form, nothing actually happened. And that's because we hadn't written any code to go ahead and handle that. So that's what we're going to cover off in this video tutorial. Um, and to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this function name and we're going to paste it down here as a separate function, uh, but we're going to change it up by adding the word submit at the end. And this is something that is automatically created uh, with Drupal's form API. Uh, anytime you create a submit uh, form, or rather a form through the form API, it will automatically create the submit function and it will pass in the form and the form state. And this will, uh, the form state will have the actual values provided by the user. So, um, We've got that opened up. Now we'll just go ahead and we'll DSM um, the form and the form state so we can see what they look like. And you can see the Drupal magic happen in the background where I just go ahead and I hit approve, uh, submit, and see this function is automatically called. And you'll see that I get the form and then I get the form state. In the form state, you see I can go down here to values and I'll get the approve deny value. Uh, and it's coming back as a one. And the reason for that is because we've got one for approve, two for deny. So that's being passed back in. Uh, so we know what action is actually happening. Uh, and then uh, importantly as well, we've got flag application table. And you'll see here that we're getting, uh, you know, zero and then zero, one and one, two and two, three and three. So this first key uh, and the value that's being provided, uh, that's based on the form API. And so if you, uh, we'll go back over, oops, what am I down here? If we go over to the form API reference, uh, we scroll down here and we take a look at options. If you give a read here, uh, the way that you set up the options, uh, you, you can have an array with the return value and then the display value, the return value and then the display value. And so our return value is actually uh, a keyed for a structured array. You'll see when we create it here, we created rows. Uh, and we did this so that, you know, first row is zero, then one, then two, then three. And so those are the actual values that get returned when the checkbox is actually checked. So I'll show you the, the difference here. So we're going to check uh, zero and this will be two, zero, one, two, three. So we'll go ahead and we'll approve those. Then when we look at the form state, if we go to values or flag application table, we we'll see that we have zero being passed back in and we have two being passed back in and they're both strings. Whereas the unchecked boxes are integers uh, and the value is, is zero, they're not checked off. Uh, so that's how we're going to actually determine which rows are checked off. And so that will be coming up in our code. You'll see that in a minute. But I just want to draw your attention to that from when we work on that. So those are the two different values that we have to look at here and pull information from. Let's go back over to our code and we can get rid of these DSMs. And what we're going to do is I'll paste in some code here. Copy this. I'm going to go ahead and we'll paste this. And so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab uh, what the action was. And so this is either a one or a two based on approving or denying. And then the second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, initialize a, a values array. Uh, it's just going to be an empty array for now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop through each one of the values and the flag application table. Uh, and I'm going to do that as a key and a value so I can actually look at this value. Um, and then remember I said, yeah, if it's checked off, it's a string. If it's not checked off, it's an integer. So what I want to do is I want to go through each one of those and I want to see, is this a string? So uh, is string is a PHP function. I can pass in a value. And if that's equal to true, okay, great. Let's add that to our values array. Um, and we can go ahead and we can uh, use that information. 
And so you'll see here, I'm grabbing it from the complete form, table options, and then the specific row. And the reason why I'm doing that is because I need all of the information. So see here, there's a complete form. Uh, this is an element in the array and I can look at the table. And if I go into options, I need all of this information, uh, you know, the title, the name, the entity, all that kind of stuff, because I'm going to use it uh, when I'm writing into the database in zero, 01. And so we're going to grab each one of those. And then as is customary uh, with Drupal, sorry. As is customary with Drupal, you don't write all of your logic in the submit button. Uh, you just kind of prep the information and then pass it off to a function. And so my function is going to be flag application administration. So I'm going to go ahead function uh, and then I'm going to uh, accept the flag, the action, the values. And then in here, I'm just going to make sure that I'm getting the proper information. So I'm just going to go action with DSM values. Uh, I got rid of my other DSM so I can go back over to uh, my page here. Let's close this up. And again, let's, uh, let's do uh, two and three here. And let's go ahead and we'll deny those and submit. And you'll see here, I'm getting a problem here with flag application form submit undefined index. So we can go ahead and we can take a look at that. Uh, and we're getting zero and null. Uh, so that's fine. So let's go back over to our code and see what we did wrong here. We'll have to add in our DSMs here. Go ahead and save that. Um, that's probably because it's going to be something here, but let's go ahead and just save. Let's go back over here. Let's submit this again. And so our, we're getting line 87. So let's look at what line 87 was. Values, form state, complete form. This is not table. This should be flag application table. Go ahead and submit that or save that. We'll go back over here, reload our page. Let's go with two and three, submit. And great, error's gone away. And we can see here, we're getting uh, this specific row, which was two, uh, and this was three. And we can confirm that by going into our value. We can go into our complete form, flag application table, options. And let's look at what two was. Two was entity ID 10. And so if we scroll down here, entity ID 10, and then we had, Three was entity 11, and we have entity 11. So that's great. So our information is being passed off properly. So now we can go ahead and we can uh, write that to the database. Let's go back over to our code here. Let's get rid of our DSMs. And I'll paste in some code here, show you what we're actually doing. Uh, there's a few things that we're doing. So let's go ahead and copy this, paste this over here. So first thing I want to do is I want to um, create this variable called status. And the reason why I'm going to do that is because I'm going to use it in this function watchdog a little bit later, which I'll explain. But essentially what I'm doing is if the action is equal to one, then status is going to be approved. If the action is not equal to one, it's going to be denied. And that's going to be passed off to the, the variable status. And we'll use that later, as I mentioned. Next thing I'm going to do is actually write to the database. And so for each one of the values that I get passed off from the submit function, uh, I'm going to take a look at the key and the value. And that value is going to be all of the information that we need. And so we're going to call it db update. Now db update will actually pass, uh, um, you know, the, the, the response um, from your, uh, your database update back into a variable. So that's why I've copied it there, or rather caught it with this variable. Um, and so db update, uh, you can look at the database API, uh, just like we looked at previously. Um, but first thing that it's going to take is an actual table name. So this is flag application. And then what field are we updating? And so we're updating the status and it's going to get the action. Remember when we created that column, it was zero, one or two. Uh, and so that's why, uh, you know, we actually created these to correspond with what the, uh, uh, the actual status of it was based on our database. And so uh, we're going to pass in a condition. It's only going to be updated where the flagging ID is equal to the actual flagging ID of the row. And then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to execute that. So once that's done, oops, I should take that out of there because that's something we'll talk about later. Uh, we're going to call watchdog. And this is a function based on uh, based out of Drupal. It's part of Drupal core. Uh, and if we go back over to api.drupal.org, and if I scroll way up here, oops, back and we go to watchdog, you'll see that uh, brief explanation that this will log a database message, uh, or rather a system message uh, into a, a table there, uh, the watchdog table. And you can provide a type and a message and then a bunch of other information. You can read all about that here. Uh, but essentially what I've done is I am passing in uh, flag application is going to be the type. And then 
it's going to be a message which says, you know, name app, uh, somebody's application for a specific node was either approved or denied. And these are all placeholders. Uh, and then we actually pass in the values for those placeholders uh, with an array here. So uh, name is actually the name of the person based on the value. Node is actually the title of the node based on the value. And status is the status that we created up here in this first line. Um, and the reason why we do that is just to make sure, uh, you know, this is all sanitized information. And so I can go ahead and I can save that. Go back over to my site. And now we can go ahead and go, uh, let's go uh, zero and two again. And let's deny these because they're already approved. So we'll submit that. And you'll see we don't have our DSMs and now uh, only two of them were denied. And if we go into our report, recent log messages, we can see here, uh, we've got two of them. Uh, user three's application uh, was, uh, you know, denied. We can actually click in here, it was denied. And then uh, your worst application was denied. And the reason why we do that in the for each is because it's going to happen for each one of the flag applications that we do, right? We want a message for each one of those. Uh, so the last thing that I want to show you is uh, we created the submit function, but uh, Drupal will also create a validate function. And that's to make sure you're getting the proper information that you're looking for. So uh, it's very similar to the submit function. I go ahead and we can just copy this. And rather than submit, uh, we can go validate. And we'll just close this off. And you'll see here if I go DSM form, DSM form state, that space there, go ahead and submit, and we should reload our page here, go back over to flag applications. Let's go ahead and approve this one, submit, and you'll see we get these DSMs because it's automatically called. Now the thing to note here is validate will be called before submit, uh, those respective functions. And what you can do here is you can check to make sure that you're getting the proper information. So let's say with values, approved and I should always be a one or a two. Let's write a check to make sure that that's the case. So here, um, where are we? This one here, form state. So um, let's go if form state uh, is not equal to one uh, or I guess that should be an and. And form state not equal to two. Uh, you know, form set error. And this is a new function that you're not going to be familiar with. So we're going to go back over to api.drupal.org and go form set error. And essentially what this allows you to do is create a red highlighted box around a form element uh, that has a problem. So uh, you can see here, you're going to pass in the name of the element and then the message. Uh, and you can also eliminate the validation errors. Uh, and there's a whole bunch of information you can read about all of that. But I will just show you here. So let's go ahead, uh, form set error. And so this will be uh, on approve or deny. So doo -doo 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 -doo, this would be approve, deny. Um, you have uh, provided an in correct value and we can go ahead and we can just leave that we can go ahead and save this and what we'll do is we'll just take off this if statement here uh, and i can just show you what this will look like uh, this will automatically error out and so let's go ahead and just go submit and you'll see here uh, you know you've provided an incorrect value this message is it pops up right away and you'll see this red box comes around the actual element that's causing the problem uh, so that's how you could write a validation function. And so I'll just go back in here and, and leave this and take out my DSMs. And we should never see this validation error. So we'll go ahead and reload a page. We can resubmit that form. And when you see it gets approved and we can go ahead and we can deny, submit that form. We never have a problem. Uh, but that's a validation function. And that's how you can use them uh, to make sure that we're getting the proper information, that someone isn't hijacking our form or trying to submit it programmatically and screw up our database where we would enter in a value that doesn't actually exist. Um, now the last thing I want to show you just before we conclude, um, is if we go back over to the form API, API reference, uh, and you'll see that there's a submit, where are we here? We created a submit button. And so this is format a, a submit. Uh, what we could do is we could actually pass in, you'll see here pound submit. 
we could pass in a, a specific custom function that we want to call. So remember, we were calling underscore submit. If we wanted to create something else, uh, or call, you know, maybe a function out of Drupal core for some reason, uh, we could pass that in to a list of, uh, to this pound submit value. And, and addi additionally, uh, if we go back here, you can see that it actually pound validate as well. And you could uh, provide your own customs uh, validation uh, function as well. Uh, so those are just kind of two neat tricks that you can do. Uh, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, I know I ran over a little bit of time, but hopefully this was helpful. Uh, I know I covered a lot and I moved pretty quickly, uh, but it's probably because it's about the seventh time I've recorded this because I screwed up so many times. Um, but again, if you have any questions, please leave a comment on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can always find me at torontowebsitedeveloper.com. But again, uh, don't use my contact form to ask me questions because it will only benefit you and nobody else uh, because it would just be me and you directly communicating. Whereas if you leave a comment, everyone can see the question. Everyone benefits from the answer. So again, if this video tutorial helps you, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know uh, how they're helping you. Uh, and as always, you can always visit me at torontowebsiteveloper.com store and purchase a video tutorial. Uh, thanks very much for watching and we'll see you for the next one.